Now we can define the governing equations and add the boundary conditions. Start by double clicking on Setup in the Workbench window. When the Fluent Launcher opens, select Double Precision. This increases both the precision and range of magnitudes that can be represented but at the cost of using increased memory. Under Solver Processes, change this to match the number of CPU cores on your computer. This allows for effective parallelization that will improve the solution time. Once this is set up, click Start to start Fluent. Once Fluent is opened, perform a mesh check by selecting the option in the top bar. We get no errors in the command pane, so our mesh is sufficient to get good results. To refine the governing equations, ensure that Steady is selected. Change solver type to density based and change 2D space to axisymmetric. We can further alter the governing equations of our mathematical model under the models option in the tree. Expanding it and double clicking on viscous. We can change the model to Inviscid and click OK. Next, double click on Energy. And click the checkbox to enable the conservation of energy equation. And click OK. This tells the Fluent Solver that these are the governing equations we want to solve. We specified that the geometry was 2D and indicated that it was axisymmetric. This tells the solver the contents of the velocity vector and how to interpret the del operator. We enabled the energy equation and enforced the steady and inviscid assumptions. We will incorporate the ideal gas law next. Back in Fluent, to further define the governing equations, we need to specify material properties and boundary conditions. Under Materials in the tree, expand it and expand Fluid and double click on Air. Here, we can specify the properties of the flow fluid. Start by changing density to ideal gas. This adds the equation of state so that density can be related to other flow properties using the ideal gas equation. This also allows us to specify CP and the molecular weight to determine the specific gas constant. Ensure that the values are 1006.43 and 28.996 if they are not set to that by default, and click change slash create. You can then close the window. To define the boundary conditions, we can double click it in the tree. Start by selecting Inlet in the list, and making sure it is set to Pressure Inlet. In the pop-up window, we can enter the provided flow properties. Set the Gauge Total Pressure to 
101,325 pascals. Next, we can specify the supersonic slash inlet gauge pressure. This is an initial guess value of the static pressure at the inlet. This value will get updated if the flow at the inlet is subsonic. If it is supersonic, however, disturbances cannot propagate upstream and the value will be left unchanged. From pre-analysis and our expectations, we know that the inlet velocity will be subsonic. So the static pressure at the inlet will get updated. It is important that this is set at a reasonable initial guess value so that the iterations converge. For our simulation, we will enter 99,348 pascals. Finally, in the thermal tab, ensure that the total temperature is set to 300 Kelvin and click apply. You can then close the window. Next, select outlet and ensure it is set to pressure outlet. Click edit to change the properties. In the new window, Change the gauge pressure to the specified 3,738.9 pascals. Click Apply to save the changes and close the window. Next, select Wall in the list and ensure it is set to wall to apply the no penetration boundary condition. Finally, select axis and ensure that it is set to axis to fully define the boundary conditions. Next, click on operating conditions. We set the gauge pressures of our boundary conditions to be absolute pressures. So we need to change the operating pressure to zero. Using gauge pressures is useful to avoid errors caused by small differences in large numbers being saved to memory. Since the pressure changes for supersonic flows are typically much larger between cells, we are less concerned with round off errors and can just use absolute pressures. This is achieved by setting the operating pressure to zero. Click OK. Doing this fully defines our mathematical model that we will now begin to solve. Make sure to save your project.